Hello and welcome to program 80 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. And this program is going to be using the time and sales provider to try and get an idea of how many of the trades are of a large number of contracts or shares and how many are maybe at the lower end. And we're doing that in two ways. One of the ways is we're working out the top 5% of the trades uh, placed in order and working out what the volume of that 5% is and then dividing it by the total volume. And that's what I'm calling a ratio. And that's what you can see in the lower graph here. And then the other way is we're, we're going through the same process. We're putting all the trades into a vector in order. And the very top one, we're saying, what is the number of contracts of that trade. Now we're doing that for total trades, but we're also doing for what I've said at ask or at bid. And what that really is, is for each update in the time and sales provider, we're keeping a record. If it's a bid, we're keeping a record of the bid price. If it's an ask, we're keeping a record of the ask price. And then if it's a trade, if the, uh, the trade is at a price which is equal to or less than the last recorded bid price, it's stored in a bid trade vet, a vector containing all the, the trades at bid or, or uh, below. And if it's a trade which is greater or equal to the last ask price, then it's stored in another vector called ask trade vector. And that is where we're getting the information. So you can see on the chart, just going back, for example, to the first chart, the, uh, the purple here, this is based on the, uh, the trades at ask. The red trades at bid and uh, the line is the total. And then similarly for the ratio, and uh, you can see the lines tend to be a little uh, little flatter here, but the um, the light, the lilac is the uh, the bids, trades at bids, or at least our estimation of that, and the blue trades at ask. And what I'm doing is plotting the, uh, the ask value as a negative, and uh, the same goes for the, the trade size. So let me uh, let me go through it in a little bit more detail. And as I did mention, I've got this thing applied to the chart twice. So if we were to go to the uh, format analysis techniques, you'll see that uh, we can actually have it applied on the same subgraph. But because the scales are, are, are very different, what I've made it so that uh, let's just look at one of these and inputs. And uh, we, we define the path and the file name ourselves. And then FVOL, that means that we're just showing the, uh, the ratio. Our uh, HNUM contracts, that means that we'd be just showing those uh, the highest trade. And it is very important to make sure that we have a different, a different file name each time we apply this to a chart, even if it's using the same data. And if, for example, we apply it again and we use the same file name, and uh, we, we uh, try it and turn that on, then what's going to happen is we're going to get an error. Turn that on and you'll see here that we've now got an error. So we need to go back to that and cr change the file name to one that's not been used by another program. Now, what I've just described was for real time. In fact, let me just go through the whole calculation so you've got a better idea of how the program works. So. As I mentioned, we're using a time and sales provider. The program includes an update event. And as I mentioned, if there is an update, if the update is not a trade and the update is a bid, we keep a record of the bid price. If it's not a trade and it's an ask, we keep a record of the ask price. If it is a trade, we, we store the size of the trade in a vector, trade vect, which is for all the trades for this particular bar. If the price of the trade is equal to or less than the bid price, then we store it in another vector, which we're calling bid trade vector. And if the price of the trade is greater or equal to the last ask price, it is stored in another vector called ask trade vector. Now, the way that we're storing them in the vector is also very uh, particular, and uh, that is using a method called record. And what that does, it makes sure that uh, the trades are stored by 
the number of contracts. So for example, in the zero, that is going to be the greatest number of contracts and then going down um, in declining order. So when once we've uh, at the very end of the bar, the last tick of the bar, we can calculate the values that we're going to be plotting on the chart. So the first one, the 5% volume ratio calculation, what we do is if you imagine all those trades stacked up in a ladder, we take the ones in the top 5%, we add those up and then we divide that by the total volume for the bar. And we do that for all the trades. In other words, using that first vector I mentioned, which was called trade vect. We also do it individually for the bid and the ask vectors. Having done that, we plot it. And as I mentioned, the, the ask is plotted as a negative, the bid as a positive, and the uh, the total trades is plotted as a line here. And then similarly for the largest trade size, this is easier to calculate because if we're putting them in order, we know uh, what, which the largest value is going to be in the zero position of the vectors. And again, we do the bid positive, the ask we're plotting negative, and then the total we're just doing as a line. Now, these are real time calculations and real time plots, but for the time in sales provider, there is very little data available historically. So if I were to refresh the chart by pressing Control R, you might expect that all the data would disappear. But in fact, it doesn't. And the reason for that is we are storing our calculations in a text file using the stream writer and stream reader. And incidentally, if uh, this is an area that interests you, you might also wish to look at my tutorial 143 and my tutorial 145 at uh, markplex.com. That's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com. So each time we do a calculation, we store the values, the calculated values in the text file using uh, a bar date time as, as it were the index. And then uh, when we restart the program or turn it on again, what the program does, it takes the information from the text file, puts it into a dictionary, and then for each bar, for each historic bar, we look and see, is the bar date time available in the dictionary? If it is, we get the information from the dictionary. We use a token list because the information is stored in a comma delimited way. We, we use a token list to extract the data and then we plot the historic values. And you'll see on this uh, chart, we have some, some gaps here. And this means that basically the program was turned off during these periods. So no real-time data was processed. So we have a gap there. But for everything that we do calculate for, then we can then reapply and get the historic data. Now, this program, if you, are, if you wish to buy it, is available at markplex.com on the program page. That's uh, program 80. You'll find various techniques there, including time and sales provider, stream writer, stream reader objects, vectors, storing vectors using this method to keep them in the correct order, copying data from a text file to a dictionary, and then copying uh, comma delimited information from the dictionary to a token list. If you have any questions or you spot any errors, then please email me. Otherwise, please make sure that you are in the Markplex email list so that you get updated when I create uh, new programs. I do put uh, most of my stuff on YouTube, but uh, not all of it. So you might want to make sure that you're subscribed to the email and of course, subscribe to, uh, to YouTube. Thank you very much. <laughs>